This video looks at the expected changes in the new version 10.7 of Final Cut Pro, which is due to be released in late November. My name's Bruce, and if we've met before, well, welcome back. Otherwise, please like and subscribe and press the bell so that I can make more review videos for you, which I'll be doing soon after it's released. The announced changes to 10.7 are 1 a scrolling timeline, two, better object tracking, and three, improved timeline navigation. And that's with an expanded roles functionality. And the fourth change is that there are improved export rendering times for H.264 and HEVC, which will now automatically send the video segments to the available media engines for simultaneous processing. So first, the scrolling timeline. Reports from attendees of the Final Cut Pro Creative Summit who witnessed the announcements by Apple on the 6th of November are that the scrolling timeline is much smoother and easier to work with than the current extension available from Command Post, which you can see here as being quite jittery. And the second of the changes is a promise of an improved object tracking functionality. And it's something I've really been looking forward to. The current 10.6 version of object tracking usually always requires rotation to be manually turned off. And to my mind, it just feels clunky overall. I expect the workflow for object tracking to be significantly improved with the version 10.7. And here's hoping that finally we'll be able to track masks. My review for 10.7 will concentrate on the object tracking. Well, the third improvement, and that's the improvement to the timeline functionality to clean up complex sections of the timeline. And they'll go into a connected storyline, which holds real promise of improved visibility and the speeding up of long form edits. It appears that both audio and video non-continuous clips will be able to be combined into a connected storyline with the gaps still remaining and the overlap shortened. It's not clear whether this will be able to be collapsed to revert back to the original overlapped clips, but at least the undo feature should allow for that anyway. And the fourth change is the improved speed of exports for H.264 and HEVC. And that's going to be a real benefit, though I have to say that the M-series silicon has improved over time, with exports very fast now compared to the Intel days. This video was published on the 19th of November, so it's only a few days now until 10.7. Most likely on a Tuesday, as that's Apple's usual case. So look at Tuesday the 21st or the 28th. I'll have a review of the new 10.7 version, concentrating on the new object tracking. So make sure you subscribe and press the bell, so you'll be notified when the 10.7 review is published. Thanks for watching.